And here's the under the stairs cupboard. And in this house, it's nice and cool, so it's the larder. We've got packets and all sorts of containers that are all mini storage solutions in themselves. And we've got the daddy of them all, a mini time capsule, the tin can. And when the stuff was put in here, we really sealed a moment in time. The tin can was patented in 1810. It was Napoleon who claimed an army marches on its stomach. And in 1795, he offered 12,000 francs for a way to keep food sterile to feed his troops away from base. After 15 years experimenting, the prize was won by Parisian Nicolas Appert, who found the key was to pre-cook the food before sealing it in an airtight can. Before the invention of the tin opener, what weapon would you have used to get into something like this? This is a copy of a, of a tin from 200 years ago. It's been made specially for us, and it's quite basic, steel sheet. So we'll have a go at getting into it. What weapon do you think we ought to use, Mike? I think we'll go for the paint first. Well, go on, then you get it out of the sheet there. Uh, I just happen to have brought a big lump hammer with me, as you do in the jungle. Soldiers used anything sharp to force an entry, and the bayonet needed a fair bit of patience. Oh. It's going to take us all day to get into this. Well, it is. Come here a minute. Come here. If you hadn't already lost your fingers, the bayonet would get you your dinner eventually. Well, that's obviously a bit hit and miss. We can do something with that, Mike. Yep, but uh, one of the earliest forms of tin opener was this, and it's called a pig stick. And I think you'll see from its shape that it's called a pig stick because the little curly bit at the end is a bit like a pig's curly tail. And the principle is that you pop that into the Centre of the can. And you just slide the blade out to fit the size of can. It's a clever design from the late 1800s, but the pig stick was a bit dangerous with its exposed cutter. <laughs> Stew. Now that seems like a lot of work to get to your dinner for me. Right, Sergeant, shows your P38. It's not a gun then. Nope. It's a tin opener. Now, this was invented for American servicemen for use in Vietnam in the 1960s. And it was on the dog tags, so it actually never left the soldier's body. Hold the tin. Hold the tin. Do you want me to hold it? Yep. Well, he's making it look very smooth, Nick. Because <laughs> there is a theory that it's called the P-38, because it took 38 goals to get the tin open. All right, Sergeant, have you ever used one of these in the jungle? No, I've used it in basic training and everything else like that with the army. And it's, and it's worked in the field, so to speak, has it? Never failed. Never failed? Never what you, failed. Looks like there you've used are. it before. Great. What have we got in here, then? <laughs> <laughs> Marvellous. Very appetising. Modern cans are a lot easier. They've got built-in mechanisms for getting inside. This is corned beef, and on the side we've got a, a key, which I can carefully take off, reposition, and then wind round. But these days, the ultimate really is the, the ring pull camp. Let's pull that and beans everywhere instantly. <laughs> OK, I'll spill the beans on how tin cans are made. For such everyday items, there's a lot more to the manufacture than you'd imagine. To make sure they seal perfectly, they are made to the same fine accuracy as parts for the aerospace industry. One in four is made from old recycled cans. They cost about 7p each to make, not much less than the price of one full of beans in some supermarkets. A total of 27 million cans are made every day in the UK. There are so many, this storage area looks like a high-tech, high-rise space city. Spacecraft are just souped up tin cans, really. But on the space shuttle, astronauts have experimented with actual food cans. They too found the contents spilt easily and drifted around the capsule. So NASA developed special airtight packaging, some of which has now floated down to Earth. Wow. 
This is the kind of packaging that works well in space. Freeze-dried food in here, it says. Extremely lightweight, just the stuff in space. No globules of food floating about. And it says it's ice cream. Let me see what it tastes like. It doesn't look very good. Have a bite of that, see what you think. What's it taste like? Nice. It tastes nice? Does it taste like ice cream? Does it? What flavour? Vanilla. Vanilla. Let me have a taste. It could have fooled me. But this kind of packaging, freeze-dried stuff, is found all around. We're all familiar with coffee. That's freeze-dried, product of the same process. But back here on Earth, the good old tin-plated steel can is still the market leader. But since the 1950s, it's been joined by aluminium cans, which are cheap, light, they can be stamped out in one piece, and they're great for canned drinks. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> the huge rise of the fizzy drink market means it now accounts for more than half the cans we used today.